Hello, I'm Simon and welcome to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to be removing, um, cleaning and testing my EGR system. Um, so that's the full system, the cooler, the actuator and the valve itself. So because I'm removing the cooler, um, I need to reduce the coolant level in the car. So I'm just using my tire compressor, which I'm pumping up to about 16 PSI forcing air into the expansion tank it's then coming out of the return hose and I'll get around about four litres of coolant out of the system and that means that when I remove the coolant pipes from the EGR cooler um, I'm not going to lose tons of coolant. You can of course drain the system um, in the standard way just by pulling the bottom radiator hose or um, or undoing the drain tap at the bottom of your radiator if you've got one. So when the pressure starts reducing that's when I know that that's about all the coolant I'm going to get out because the air is making its way past and as you can see it's uh, nearly done there. So on my car, the next job is to remove the engine cover, also to remove the um, the strut brace because I'm going to need access behind the engine for uh, for some of the bolts. Then also because my EGR is at the side of the engine. I'm going to uh, remove my um, air filter box and um, air intake pipe work as well. So the access is getting a bit better, just need to remove that nut now so I can take off the large air intake hose. And then this solid aluminium hose that's held on by a uh, union, union hose clip just there, Jubilee clip and it's held on by a bolt as well holding it to the engine block which I'm just showing you there. I needed uh, the full range of tools with extensions and all sorts to try and make it through the brake pipe work in order to access the bolt. If this is a job you're thinking of doing on your car whether you've got this engine or something else um, you know do plan ahead because you might need a plan b or a plan c dependent on how bad access is some egrs are very easy to get to some are tucked right at the back of the engine so that's the actual cooler just there so i'm gonna have to take off some pipe work at the front now and you'll see there's quite a lot of oil over the right hand side of the engine i'll come back to that in a sec so I need to remove also these two bolts here and there's another two bolts. These two bolts connect directly to the exhaust system Then there's another two bolts holding the actual cooler on. So yeah you'll see quite a bit of oil here and oddly I don't actually have a large oil loss. I don't have to top it up between services so it's a very fine misting of oil that's been uh, leaking out and I think it's a combination of overboost and it bursting through um, uh, pipe unions and also I think my vacuum pump has got a bit of an oil leak as well so I might have to investigate that at some point in the future. So I'm just taking off the uh, the main intercooler hose that fits onto the EGR mixer plenum. Just pulling some of the large um, battery and starter main cables out the way to uh, try and access everything. I'm trying to keep it to a minimum the uh, the amount of things that I need to take off. 
my starter motor is also at the front of the engine so um, if you've got this engine you might want to consider removing the battery negative lead just in case um, you know to prevent against shorting against any bodywork but uh, I just kept well clear of everything and everything was fine. So on the front of the cooler was the thin shim and then there's these two larger bolts which were holding the cooler on at the back. You can just see how it's displaced. I'll just get a better focus, there we go. So you can see where it's just been displaced where I've taken the bolts out and it's just loosened off at the back there. And then the cooler is then held on with the two coolant pipes which need removing. I lost around about 100 mil of uh, coolant, hardly anything at all. Would have been much worse if I not um, drained the cooling system. And one of my hose clamps had an Urtica clamp, that metal clamp there, so uh, that needed replacing. So it's just then this final bolt, um, which is holding the cooler to the engine block. Once again, just using a variety of extensions to work my way through the, uh, the pipe work under the high pressure pump so I can get access to it. And then it's just a case of being very careful not to stress any wiring looms, anything like that. The um, EGR actuator, because it's an electronic one in this video, um, it, I also have to unplug the, uh, the actuator from the main wiring harness. You can just see that plug coming into view now. So on this it was just a case of uh, just popping up the clip with a screwdriver and then the plug slides off. So yeah, so I think the overboost is, uh, the, the car's been barely used in the last year, I guess like everyone else's really. And, um, and the EGR performance hasn't been as it should be. And I'll show you some diagnostics at the end that uh, demonstrate the difference between before and after. Um, so cleaning this, removing it and cleaning it, it was the only solution. There was there was no other solution to, um, I mean, there's EGR sprays that you can spray into the air intake, all that kind of stuff, but uh, this was way beyond that, as you'll see. So, need to degunk everything. I could barely uh, see the bolts, so there's actually six bolts holding the actuator and the valve onto the cooler. So I'm just using carburetor cleaner to clean off the bolts. See the state of it there, just just loads of bits of oil and dust just all caked on over the years. This has done 209,000 miles and it's uh, coming up to 19 years old. So it's not done too bad to last this long before it needed um, some attention. So I just crack off um, just to make sure I can get these bolts undone before I get the impact onto it. I don't want to go stripping any bolt heads here. On these it was a T40 and um, as you can see I needed a long T40 because they're, they're very close to the body of the actuator and the cooler so access can be quite tricky so once again you've really got to have a, a reasonable tool collection, a reasonable selection of second and third choice tools in order to access everything. Now I know that they'll undo without stripping, I'll just speed things up just by getting my impact on them and it whizzes the bolts out no problem. On mine four bolts were the same length, longer ones and then there was two slightly shorter ones uh, on that leading edge of the actuator. The different thread um, sizes or thread width so um, you can't really go too far wrong there, but uh, just mark them if you need to remember which bolt goes where. So there's a shim between the actuator and the valve. So that's the actuator just there. Also take a note if that rubber bung, it only fits on one way. It has a little recess in it, so just check on that. As you can see, the actuator was free moving just there. And then splitting the cooler from the main valve itself. Once again, another shim in there to um, prevent against leaks. So that's going to get cleaned up too. 
and this this here was the smoking gun this was the uh you know the the valve is completely seized i could uh I try you know i'm not i'm not a weak man but uh there was no way i was managing to press that in with with my thumbs uh it was completely coked up inside can't even really see inside there because uh because of the amount of carbon and soot so in the end i got uh a half inch socket extension and um, off camera I just gave it a little bit of a whack with a hammer and uh, and that freed up the valve and as you can see it's spring loaded so it has a natural resting position and then the actuator presses on the valve in order to um, to open it to allow the correct EGR flow. We'll try and see inside now and as you can see now we can actually push the valve you can just see it moving inside and you can tell from how caked up it is that uh, it's probably not done that for quite some time <laughs> so once again good old carburetor cleaner getting in there this uh, don't underestimate how filthy a job this is as well it's you're, you're gonna get absolutely covered on your hands and um, yeah You'll still be picking it out of your nails about three days later. Now you can try and fill it as best you can and leave it to soak or agitate it. You can use wire brushes, toothbrushes, whatever works for you really. But the main thing is, is to get it as, as clean as possible. And I'd like to apologise to any ladies watching, this isn't my usual technique. So, have a look at this, look at this coming out here now. And within that, it's very fine, gritty um, bits of carbon in there. So I then decided to get the Dremel wire brush in there. And that did a reasonable job of loosening off, you know, some of the less stubborn carbon. But then I had to then get um, a sanding bit onto the Dremel in order to get in there a little bit more. And it was difficult because you, you couldn't see exactly what the profile should be of the hole. You, you couldn't work out what was carbon and what was supposed to be there. So you just have to take your time. So that's the actual cooler and you can see daylight through it. So it's uh, it was still going to get clean though with, uh, with carb cleaner. So I thought I'd give the actuator a test. I'm just using a 12 volt DC power adapter. It's a 12 volt pulse width modulation um, actuator and basically when the actuator is all bolted on it's closed down and then the solenoid inside pushes the pin out and um, but it doesn't push it so it's solid it is quite a strong action but it, it's not absolutely solid so when it's pushed out I can still with some force push it back and that's actually quite a nice little design um, feature really because if it's pushing against a valve that won't open it's not going to burn it out by you know having a irresistible force against an immovable object um, and so just by doing that I could see running that 12 volts through it I could see that there was absolutely no problem with the actuator the resistance across the coil, the official figure is about 7.2 ohms across the two pins of the actuator. I was getting, um, after leads resistance was removed, I was getting 7.9 ohms. So there was, there was no issue with the actuator and it didn't need replacing. So things are looking a lot cleaner now, as you can see in there. Just turn up the brightness and it was really quite pitted. All inside there you can see all the pit in there and I think that's caused from just heat because the valve's been shut the exhaust gases haven't been able to actually flow through and into the cooler and so some of the exhaust gases that do make it there 
that they're just you know red hot having just come out of the engine and uh and it's ended up where you can see scorches around the bolt holes and what have you so it had been seized for a little while and um yeah i'm, I'm glad i got it done you can just see the chamber that basically when the valve opens it then allows the gases through now with this valve i think there's a special tool there were some reference marks on there and obviously the valve wasn't built like that i think that actually screws in but there's clearly some special tool required to unscrew it out of there i wish i could have taken the actual whole valve out of the housing to you know really go to town with the cleaning but i did it as best i could and re restored the operation anyway so uh if you can't do anything about it, you can't do anything about it. But if anyone does know of a special tool to take that out, then do leave it in the comments. And here's the cooler. We can actually see the writing on it now, see the production date way back in uh, 22nd of February, back in 2002, made by Bear in Germany. And Bear are a fantastic company. They make excellent quality parts. And the fact that everything, well, this is still doing the business you know nearly 20 years on just needed this little bit of attention but what car doesn't at, at this age and this mileage and then i just ran through some water through the two coolant pipes just to make sure that um you know no debris had made its way into the coolant pipes and this is everything put back together this is the whole um, actuator valve and cooler all back to normal so now it's all bolted back together. I did want to give it just one final test just to make sure that the actuator is still doing its job. Now it's bolted back onto the system. So once again, just hooking up the 12 volts and you can hear the valve, uh, the actuator moving the valve quite nicely. Here we go, we've got a bit of a zoom going on here. And it's a nice, quick, snappy action, exactly as it's supposed to be. So that is job done and everything's back to normal. So it was just a question of putting that back on the car. And um, and the difference was uh, yeah, pretty noticeable. I, I've noticed the difference, certainly less smoke. It was well, zero smoke actually coming out the back now, just in time for my MOT. So the diagnostics, um, the valve is supposed to have a maximum opening of 40% and then it drops down to 1%. But as you can see on the uh, data taken before I removed and cleaned the valve, it was hovering around 60% and then dropping down to 1%. But it wouldn't drop until the revs had been raised quite high. It's getting to about 2,500 revs. 2600 before finally finally the, the valve then opens and drops down and so you can see from the plots on the graph just how much revs had to be put in there before the valve was actually opening and then when it was resting it was still at the 60 percent when it should be at the 40 percent as per the official technical specs for my particular valve um, if you've not got you know accurate diagnostics like this don't let that stop you from at least having a look at at the egr and um, you know getting it working correctly so if we do the the uh, this is the data now afterwards and as you can see now after cleaning the actuator is now hovering around about 40 to 45 percent exactly as it should be and when i increase the revs the the uh, percentage of the egr drops much much sooner i only have to start raising the revs above a thousand something like that and because it's all free moving again the egr is um, opening exactly as it should and then snapping back to the you know around the 40 45 percent figure so it's not just a job that you can think that you've done some good you, you can actually physically see it with with the diagnostics before and after and compare it 
And the big thing for me, what I used to notice was even after a long run, if I put my foot down, I was still getting bits of smoke. I could see it in the rear view mirror. Whereas, you know, when everything was fine on the car up to about a year ago, after a good run, there'd, there'd never be any smoke. And so, um, so that's what then got me looking into, you know, getting some live data from the intake system and just seeing, uh, seeing if there was anything obvious with the EGR. And there we go. So I'll just uh, show the plots before and after. So there, uh, so you can see the difference. And um, yeah, like I say, you can see the difference in how high the revs have to rise before the EGR is activated. And um, it's not a job for beginners, I wouldn't say necessarily. All depends on how you know how good your tool collection is, how mechanically sympathetic you are. Don't you know? Don't go wrenching anything off that you know don't go forcing anything um but if you have been having issues then uh, i mean i've basically been driving around with a blank tgr in effect for you know the last six months or so but because the engine computer is expecting that egr flow that's why you're getting dodgy fueling and excess smoke and um and so it did need doing and that's it. I hope you find that useful and uh, vaguely interesting. And thanks for staying to the end. And thanks very much for watching.